six. Directional derivatives and the gradient vector. So I've already talked about each of these, but now um, we're going to discuss these in much more detail. So I've given you sort of some intuitive ideas about the directional derivative and uh, the gradient vector, and I gave you some uh, uh, definitions for particular cases, uh, for, for like the case of like for Rn, uh, for directional derivatives and for the gradient vector. So let's uh, study these more in detail. Section 14.6, directional derivatives and the gradient vector. So first, directional derivatives. Let V be a normed vector space, again, a complete norm vector space, a bonic space, a parameterized curve, gamma, from the closed interval AB into the vector space V is differentiable at X in the interval AB if the, if only if, the derivative of gamma exists, in which case the differential d gamma x at h is just equal to h times the derivative of gamma. Actually, maybe I should write it the other way around. Since I usually write it that way, uh, is the derivative of gamma times h. For any non-zero vector, B and vector A, let gamma be the parameterization of the straight line through A in the direction of V. So <clears throat> gamma V, uh, at, uh, at A, evaluate T is just A plus TV. The derivative of F at T equaling zero, if it exists, is called uh, the derivative of F in the direction of V at T and is denoted by D sub V F at A. It is, in our previous notation, the differential of F sub A composed with gamma sub V at zero. It is the limit as T goes to zero of F evaluated at A plus TV minus F at A all divided by T. So this is the directional derivative in the direction of V. Since U is equal to C V and C greater than zero implies that D sub U F evaluate A is equal to C times D sub v, f evaluate a, then we restrict u to be unit vectors and call it the directional derivative. So when we talk about directional derivatives, we usually, well, we restrict this vector to be a unit vector. Why? Because, well, it just makes your life easier. I mean, so uh, all it if it's not directional, uh, if it's not a, a unit vector, then it just gives you a, a scalar time. It doesn't do anything. So you might as well restrict everything to being a unit vector. So uh, let's look at a particular case where we're doing this, uh, where F goes from R2 to R. 
the directional derivative of f at x0, y0 in the direction of the unit vector u, uh, and I guess I'll call it the vector ab, is d sub u f at x0, y0 is the limit as h approaches 0 of f at x0 plus h a comma y0 plus h b minus f of x0 comma y0 all over h. So this again is just the uh, directional derivative definition uh, that we were using in the previous uh, sections. If f is differentiable at a, hmm, then every uh, directional derivative exists and it has a nice little form. The directional derivative d sub u f at a is just our differential that we had uh, defined in the previous section of f at a uh, evaluated at u. So this is just going to be actually a, a dot product. So however, because we've done these counterexamples, the existence of all directional derivatives d sub u f at a of a function f at a point a does not imply the differentiability of f at a. So we've shown that uh, counterexample. Uh, even though, oh, so even though uh, we had that all directional derivatives existed, uh, we still didn't have a differentiability. Oh, I'm, I'll give yet another uh, example. Actually, this is a simpler example than I gave you from before. Uh, let f of xy equal x cubed over x squared plus y squared. Um, this is actually similar. I think I gave you before is probably something like, uh, it's still a cubic, but I probably said x squared y. Uh, if xy is not equal to the origin, and it's equal to zero if xy is equal to the origin. Show that every directional derivative uh, exists at the origin, yet f is not differentiable at the origin. So let u e be have components uh, u comma v uh, with u squared plus v squared equals one. Then the directional derivative d sub u comma v. So this is directional derivative in the direction of the vector u comma v of f evaluated at the origin is a limit as h goes to zero of f of, well, the component zero plus h u comma zero plus h v minus f of zero zero divided by h. So let's take the limit of that as h goes to zero. This is equal to limit as h goes to zero. Well, zero plus h u is just h u, zero plus h v is just h v. So the limit as h approaches zero, f of h u comma h v minus f of zero, zero, all divided by h. And so <clears throat> this is the limit here as h approaches zero of, well, plug in for x h u, so h u cubed divided by h u squared plus h v squared, replacing uh, y by h v, minus uh, f of zero, zero, well, f at the origin is just zero, all divided by h. So you're subtracting zero, so it doesn't do anything. You cancel out one of the h's. So this just becomes h squared. I can factor out an h squared from the denominator. The h squares cancel. 
Oops. The eight squares cancel. And so I get here the limit as h approaches zero of u squared, uh, u cubed, sorry, over u squared plus v squared. Well, u squared plus v squared is one. So this is limit as h approaches zero of u cubed, which is just u cubed. So, <clears throat> Every directional derivative uh, exists. It's just equal to some nice uh, quantity. Uh, but f is not differentiable. And it's not differentiable because um, this is homogeneous. So this, since this function is homogeneous, um, well, since every homogeneous di uh, uh, differentiable uh, function is linear, then this cannot be differentiable because if it were differentiable, it would be linear. So since every homogeneous differentiable function is linear, then f is not differentiable, okay? Uh, let's show that f is homogeneous. Homogeneous means that basically f of h u h v is just h. You can bring out the h of f u v, uh, where h here can be uh, some exponent. Okay, so I have here replace x by h u, y by h v. So this is h cubed u cubed over h squared u squared plus h squared v squared. Factor out the h squared. The two of the h's will cancel. So this is just h times u cubed over u squared plus v squared. And so, I can just factor out h here. So this is just h times f of uv. And so f is homogeneous, and it's homogeneous of degree 1, because this exponent here is a exponent of 1. Let me give you the following uh, theorem, which is something I, I stated. Uh, but now we'll, we'll do it as a, as a theorem. If f is, is a differentiable function of x and y, then f has directional derivative in the direction of any unit vector u equaling a, b, and it has a specific form. The directional derivative, d sub u f at x, y, is equal to the gradient of f at x, y dot this unit vector. And so this is the specific form of the directional derivative. It's just a dot product. So it is the gradient of f dot the vector ab, the unit vector ab. It is the dot product of the vector partial f with respect to x comma partial f with respect to y dot the vector a comma b. It is, let's write it down explicitly, partial of f respect to x times a plus partial of f respect to y times b. Let me give you the notation for gradient. If f is a function of two variables, x and y, 
then the gradient of f is the vector function nabla f so this symbol is called nabla so this is the nabla symbol and we usually call it del so so this is the nabla symbol and we usually say del f so instead of saying like delta uh, we call it del f so del f is equal to the vector is equal to eh, and again this is sort of symbolically it can be thought of as this sort of operator functional so this really quote unquote doesn't make sense but we can think of it as being the vector uh, partial with respect to x partial with respect to y so it just means well it's something it's like saying it's a square uh, but but you haven't said x squared it's it's just sort of the what you operate on uh operate on f so this is the vector now this would make sense it's the vector partial of f respect to x comma partial f respect to y it is partial of f respect to x oops let me uh put it in black uh, let me call this partial of f respect to x uh, times the uh, uh, basis vector i partial of f respect to y times the standard basis vector j the directional derivative d sub u of f at x y is just the gradient vector del f at x y dot the unit vector u so usually we think of this last equation as being the definition or the def the definition really of the uh directional derivative or that's usually a a definition that we use for the directional derivative next let's go over the following theorem suppose that f is differentiable then the maximum value of the directional derivative d sub u of f at x is the norm of the gradient vector of f so del f at x and it occurs when u has the same direction as del f at x so if we're trying to maximize a value uh, then we look at the um, uh, if we're trying to max maximize the directional derivative, the directional derivative uh, is maximized when it's in the direction of this gradient vector and its maximum value is the norm of this uh, gradient vector. So, um, well, about two seconds, okay. tangent planes to a level surface. So suppose you have a level surface. Um, F of X is equal to some constant K. Then the tangent plane will be given by the following. It'll just be del F at X zero, Y zero, Z zero dot r prime at t0 equaling zero 
uh, the tangent plane to level surface uh, therefore has the following form. Let's just rewrite this. And so rewriting the dot product of del f of the gradient vector times this derivative uh, times this is just going to be, well, the partial of f respect to x at x0, y0, z0 times x minus uh, x0 plus, that should have been a prime, I guess, times uh, partial of f respect to y at x0, y0, z0 times y minus y0 plus the partial of f respect to z at x0, y0, z0 times z minus z0 equals 0. Uh, the normal plane, well, uh, the normal plane is the normal line to a tangent plane will have, since this is zero, then the normal, the normal line will be parallel to, the, to this uh, gradient vector. And so the normal line to the tangent plane of a level surface will be, oh, I wrote it this way, uh, x minus x zero over the partial of f respect to x, x zero, y zero, z zero equals z minus, uh, y minus y zero over partial of f respect to y, x zero, y zero, z zero equal to z minus z zero over the partial of f respect to z, x zero, y zero, z zero. And, Tomorrow, I guess I will do some examples uh, involving this, but today is probably it. That's probably it for today. So, um, any questions on anything? Any questions on anything? If not, I will end this. And I don't see anything yet, so I'll end this. Reading. We were last time. So last time we had gone through the definition of directional derivative and all these properties of directional derivatives, but we hadn't really done any uh, examples uh, from the book. So let's do some examples from the book. So problems here, wait, let me get another page here so I can do some work. Okay, so in problems uh, four through six, find the directional derivative of f at the given point in the direction of the indicated angle theta. Okay, so let's do that. So, <clears throat> First off, well, uh, let's figure out, let's make a uh, unit vector in the direction of this. So uh, let me actually draw something. So I have here an angle of pi over three. Okay, so uh, let me write, uh, let's do a one. Uh, opposite that is gonna be one half. Opposite that is rad three over two. Okay, so uh, my unit vector, I can just do u equaling the vector red three over two comma one half. So it can have that as my uh, unit vector. <clears throat> 
in addition to that. Um, let me find the uh, directional derivative. And so the directional derivative in the direction of u of f of, let's say, at the point uh, 1, 2 is going to equal, well, um, this was defined, well, this was equal to d f sub 1, 2 in the direction of u. Oh, maybe I should write what u is. Um, red 3 over 2, 1 half. Okay. And we had that this was just equal to, uh, we did it as a gradient. So this was the gradient of f at one, two, uh, dot the unit vector. We're at three over two, one half. So this was equal to partial f, partial x, one, two, comma, partial f, partial y, one, two, dot, Radical three over two, comma, one half. Okay. So let's figure out what each of these um, partial derivatives are. So let's find the partial of f with respect to x. And then let's evaluate that at uh, one, two. So this is gonna be uh, the partial of, it's just, well, y cubed. The partial of respect to x of a uh, negative x squared is negative two x. And so let's evaluate this at one, two, so partial of f with respect to x at one, two is going to equal um, two cubed minus two times one, eight minus two is six. Take the partial of f respect to y. And so um, I have a constant x. The derivative of y cubed is 3y squared. The partial derivative of x squared with respect to y is just zero. And so let's plug in. Of f respect to y at one, two is equal to three times x times y squared. Three times four is 12. And so let's figure out the partial, uh, the uh, directional derivative. So the directional derivative, rad three, in the direction of rad three 
over two, one half, of f at uh, the point uh, one, two. was just equal to the partial, which was six. Let me see, did I actually do the dot product? No, I actually just wrote it. Okay, so it was equal to six comma 12 dot red three over two, one half. Okay, so let's, uh, Evaluate that. I guess I need just a little bit more room. Actually, I can just pull this down for that room. So this is equal to three, red three, plus, uh, so, uh, two is three, 12 divided by two is six. And that is your answer. Okay, let me do another example. Pull this up a little bit. So problem number 12. In exercises 11 through 17, directional derivative of the function at the given point in the direction of the vector uh, v. And so, first, I guess, uh, let me make uh, v into a uh, unit vector. And so, Let's determine the length of V. So this is just gonna be the dot product. And so three squared. Oops, plus five squared. Nine plus 25 is 34. So, let me get another page. So I have that the length here of V is rad 34. Okay. Uh, now let's take the uh, partials just like we did above. So let's take the partials of each of these. Uh, the partial of f with respect to x. Well, um, this is a quotient. So let's use the uh, quotient rule. And so I have the derivative of the numerator uh, with respect to x is just one times the denominator x squared plus x squared plus y squared minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, 2x, all divided by the denominator, x squared plus y squared squared. So this is equal to uh, x squared plus y squared minus 2x squared over x squared plus y squared. Uh, so let's simplify this. So this is equal to y squared minus x squared over x squared plus y squared quantity squared. Okay. So that's a partial of f respect to x. Let's take the partial of f respect to y. Um, well, actually, let's evaluate it. 
uh, at the point one, two. Let's do that first. So partial of F, <laughs> uh, sorry about that, that's a typo. Uh, with respect to X, at the point uh, one, two, is gonna equal um, two squared minus one squared divided by one squared plus two squared squared. So this is equal to four minus one over uh, one One plus four is five. Well, five squared, I guess I'll do that. So this is equal to hmm. There it is. So the partial of F respect to X at one two is equal to a negative uh, positive three over twenty five. Let's take the partial of F respect to Y. Only the denominator depends on Y. So I can think of this as uh, being X times X squared plus one, also negative one. So I'll drop down the negative one times x, um, times x squared plus y squared, oops. So I'll drop to the negative out in front. x times x squared plus y squared, all to the power of, well, take one less. And so if I take one less, I'll get here negative two times a derivative of what's inside derivative of what's inside is 2y. And so I get a negative 2xy over x squared plus y squared squared. So now let's find the partial of f with respect to y at the point one, two. And so I'll replace X by one, Y by two, X by one, Y by two. So this is a negative four over five squared, which was 25. So that's the partial of F with respect to Y. I at one, two. Therefore, just like above, I have here the directional derivative in the direction of the vector uh, three, five. Did I ever? Oh, it, ooh. So, so uh, I didn't tell you what my unit vector was. So, U was well. I I would make the vector uh, three five into a unit vector, and so in order to do that, so I guess I'll say the length of v equaling rad thirty four implies that U the vector u is equal to uh, the vector three over rad 34, five over rad 34. So that makes uh, my vector into a unit vector. Yeah, I'm almost done, so maybe I'll just pull this down to get a little bit more room. And so this is equal to, did I pull that? Yes, I did. Okay, so this is equal to 
the directional derivative in the direction of three hmm in the direction of three over rad thirty four comma three over rad thirty four comma five over rad thirty four F at uh, one two is equal to the dot product of uh, the partial respect to x was 3 over 25 with respect to y, 4 over 25. And I dot that with 3 over rad 34. Uh, five over at 34. So this is going to equal uh, three times three is nine over 25 rad 34 minus 20, four times five, 20 over 25 rad 34. And so this is equal to hmm. okay, so this is equal to uh, a negative eleven over twenty five red thirty four. And that is your answer. Okay, uh, let me do another example. Get, I obviously will need more room. In exercises 21 through 26, find the maximum rate of change of F at the given point and the direction in which it occurs. And so, um, the maximum rate of change will occur in the direction of the gradient. Uh, the gradient tells you uh, the direction in which the uh, function changes the, uh, the most and the the actual amount that it's going to. So you can think of if you are uh, walking on a mountain and you want to find the path of greatest, let's say you want to go uh, down the great path of greatest descent, you would just go in the direction of your gradient. You would go in the direction of your well, either in the direction of your gradient or in the opposite direction, but they'll they'll it'll be the direction of your gradient. Okay, so first I want to determine uh, the uh, gradient, and so let's take the partials. So the partial of f with respect to S is, well, uh, T is just a constant. And so I have T times E to the, um, well, derivative of E to any exponent is E to that exponent, ST, times the derivative of the exponent. Well, the derivative of S times the constant T is just T, so this becomes T squared. Therefore, the value, well, maybe I'll do both of them. And so the value of the partial 
of f with respect to t is going to be, well, uh, I'll use the product rule, the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. The derivative of e to the st is just e to the st times the derivative of the exponent. The derivative of st is just the constant s. And so this is equal to, so the partial of f respect to t is, and maybe I'll factor out e to the st, and what remains is one plus st. And so let's figure out the value of this uh, gradient at the point one, two. And so I have my gradient here. And let's figure out its value at zero, two. So this is just going to equal, well, plug in for S zero for T two. So this is equal to two squared E to the zero times two. e to the uh, zero times two times one plus uh, zero times two. Okay, so this is equal to two squared, which is four. Uh, e to the zero is one, so this whole thing is four. Uh, e to the zero is one. 2 times 0 is 0, 1 plus 0 is 1, times 1 is 1. Okay. And so now let's find the length, the magnitude of this vector. And so the magnitude of the gradient is just going to be 4 squared plus 1 squared. 16 plus 1 is 17. And so, almost done. So, <clears throat> the direction of, okay, come on, the direction of the maximum rate of change is the vector. 4, 1, and uh, the maximum rate of change is rad 17. And that is your answer. Let me do, oh, let me do problem number 42. Okay. In exercises 41 through 46, find the equations Well, that has an extra thing, I'm not sure. Equations. Of A. The tangent plane, B. The normal line to the given surface at the specified point. Oh, okay, so. Uh, in this case, uh, let's take uh, some partials. So first, maybe I'll write F 
of, let's call it X, Y, Z. Let's, and it really doesn't matter which way I write this. Um, maybe I'll write this as X squared minus Y squared minus Z squared. Okay. And we'll just be looking at uh, where our F, X, Y is. Okay, so let's take some uh, partials. The partial of F with respect to X is going to equal, well, 2X. Oops, 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 oops. That's just an X. That's not X squared. Wait, 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 wait one second. That was a typo. Uh, this is just x, not x squared. And so the partial of f respect to x is 1. Partial of f respect to y is negative 2y. Partial of f respect to z is negative 2z. And so let's evaluate. partial of f at the point uh, 3, 1, minus 1 is just 1. Partial of f respect to y at 3, 1, negative 1. Plug in 1 for y, I get a negative 2. Uh, partial of f respect to z at 3, 1, negative 1. Uh, negative 2 times negative 1 is a positive 2. <clears throat> so let's find the equation of the tan tangent plane. So the, pan the equation of a tangent plane to a level surface Uh, y, uh, F equaling some constant. In this case, one uh, at X zero, Y zero, Z zero is, oh, here, wait one second. Z zero. Is. Uh, given by. F. X zero. Y zero. Z zero. Uh, X minus X zero. Partial f respect to y, x zero y y zero z zero zero. Partial of f respect to z x zero y zero z zero uh, z minus z zero. So if I plug that in, I get uh, 1 x minus 3 plus negative 2 y minus 1 plus 2 z minus a negative 1 equaling 0. So I have that. My equation is x minus 2y
plus 2z. Uh, so this is going to be a negative 3 plus 2 plus 2. So that's uh, plus 1. And so equals negative 1. That is the equation of my tangent plane. Uh, let me do the equation of my um, normal line. And so the equation of the normal line to the tangent plane of the level surface of F equaling K at X zero, Y zero, Z zero is And I'll write it this way because um, I like to write it this way better. Uh, so for some reason, I wrote it differently um, yesterday, but it'll give you the same, the same way of writing it. I'll divide by x minus x zero rather than uh, writing it as a reciprocal. So equals partial of f respect to y x0, y0, z0 uh, over y minus y0 equals partial of f respect to z, x0, y0, z0. Hmm. Okay. There it is, z0 over z minus z0. And so uh, this gives, well, one over x minus three is equal to negative two over y minus one is equal to two over z plus one. Okay. Yes. One minus two, one. Yes. Okay. And so that's the equation of your normal line. And that's your answer. So that finishes off section 14.6. Uh,